So today was the sixth round of the FideChess.com Grand Swiss and Nihal Sarin was facing David Navara, one of the top board. And Nihal played the same line that was played by Pragnananda against Adiban. And after Bishop A6, which was not the best move, Bishop G4 would have been was what Adiban had played. Bishop A6, Rook D1, C5. If you take with the Queen, he wanted to go Bishop E2. So he took with the Pawn. And then after this, we soon reached a position where Nihal won the queen but had lost two rooks however he had the strong c pawn and also the black king was slightly weak and using these two features in the position he started to put a lot of pressure on black so he took the e7 pawn and then somewhere around here he was beginning to press quite a lot bishop e5 now h5 was a strong move but he went queen d5 and now rook d8 h5 rook e6 h6 and this is where david navara went wrong with bishop h6 he had to take on d6 when after cd6 he had king f8 and good drawing chances but he took here and then nihal pushed c6 if he had brought his bishop back i think he would have had excellent chances to push his pawn and win the game but he went c6 c7 and here this position does require deeper inspection maybe queen b8 gives better winning chances but after a6 bishop b6 navara had managed to build a fortress where his a7 pawn and gave up his bishop and in this position nihal gave a check and offered a draw the thing is that in this situation white is unable to break through black has a very solid position it's called as a fortress and although computers might give an advantage to white it is impossible to break through the rook covers the fifth rank so the king cannot enter and it's a draw so nihal drew he was very close to winning but a very good news for indians is shashikiran who managed to win his game in fact shashikiran in this position when black goes usually c5 went for the move e5 and i think what his opponent missed here was that at this point he thought he could have take the pawn on e4 but this turns out to be a blunder because of queen d1 takes knight f2 with a fork seeing that this variation was possible alexander predke who has played really a good event in this tournament went bishop e2 but then after queen d5 queen e5 slowly shashikiran managed to get a very good position and then he took on f2 with a fork here and uh, rook f1 knight d3 although it took shashikiran some time to win from this position the result was never really in doubt he's two pawns up and he managed to slowly and steadily converted as he opened one file after another on the queen side and he broke through uh, last position if we see here he finished it off with a flourish with g3 and rook g1 when you win the bishop sashigiran now leads the tournament with four and a half points out of six it all depends on this game of nair against karuana which seems like maybe nair has some chances if nair wins he'll be the sole leader but if karuana draws then shashikiran will lead the tournament together with ali reza firuja alexi shiro uh, nair and mvl so it'll be an exciting round next indian was hari krishna he was slightly worse throughout the game in fact even in the final position hari krishna who was black here was very passive and it seemed like blue bomb should have continued and should have put pressure but after takes 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 he agreed to a draw and that was a good result for hari the next indian was pragnananda who got totally outplayed in this game against alexi sarana firstly sarana played the typical semi tarash pawn sacrifice he played d5 ed e5 and after knight d7 well black was doing pretty well he should have played knight c5 and the position is complicated but he went for the move d4 and now after this sarana was impeccable first he went knight f5 then he played queen c3 then he played rook g3 he brought his rook to g4 he then played to c4 i think this entire sequence of 10 odd moves was just simply perfect this in this way pragnananda lost because if he goes to f7 there is knight d6 check and you lose if you go to king e8 i have rook c6 queen c6 and queen e7 mate if you go to g8 i have knight e7 fork and you lose the rook 
Bukesh versus Raunak Sadhwani was very exciting battle between two Indian youngsters and it was filled with many ups and downs till some position actually Gukesh was doing very much okay but then after this queen d4 things started to change knight e4 came in then f6 was played and then b6 rook e7 slowly the bishop was running out of squares that was a problem and Gukesh did not manage to stabilize the position and here Raunak was pawn up he then brought his king in and then eventually he won a piece here and later on the game as well a fairly straightforward victory for Raunak but this is his second consecutive win in the tournament uh, and he is now moved up to three and a half points out of six so good comeback Onishchuk versus Arjun is a game that is still going on it seems like Onishchuk is slightly better but you never know yeah uh, Arjun might be able to hold and also turn the tables because the position is complicated the knight can join in and see how it goes there was this one result was Jobawa versus Jules Mossad where Jobawa won in just 14 moves that's just a very nice not an Indian game but something that you don't use Really seen top grandmaster chess that too in a classical game Rauf Mamedov against Surya Shekhar Ganguly uh, I think it was a very good effort by Surya he had simply no issues to hold his opponent and that is already great when you are playing with the black pieces Sethu Raman managed to in such a position he should have taken on e5 he took on g6 and after bishop d6 he was in trouble and uh, although the pawns are equal the white king is slightly weak the a5 pawn is weak and the black queen managed to here enter with rook c3 h3 is hanging and so Setu Raman resigned the game Demchenko won well in the game between uh, Adiban and Goryachkina something truly unusual happened firstly it was a very very complicated game that started off with d4 d6 line and Adiban true to his style tried to attack and we reached this position where Adiban is better but Goryachkina sacrificed a rook to break in Adiban did not accept it and here he was better he took on g4 knight here he came back and now if queen c4 black is close to winning in the position is very he has a very strong position with rook c8 coming up a2 is weak but he went queen g4 and the players repeated the moves and maybe it's one of the first times or one of the rare occasions when Adiban in a hugely winning position has agreed to a draw moving on to the women's section we had Harika playing against Nino Batsyashvili and uh, Harika was completely better in fact if we look at this position that she had she had won a pawn and was very easily pressing in the position won another pawn and she should have won this game but as it turned out Nino Batsyashvili is a big big fighter and in the end with this you were a pawn down but managed to hold it and Nino would be very happy with the result while Harika tried very hard for many moves in the end she too agreed to a draw the game between Vantika and Koschenyu uh, featured some kind of a hedgehog setup with this move e5 Vantika let Koschenyu take over the initiative and it was still the position was pretty good for Vantika but then once the attack began and there was some very good fireworks in the position it seemed like white was unable to unravel but slowly and steadily Koschenyuk did and she launched an attack against the black king and she won the game. So Koschenyuk beat Vantika. Vaishali versus Asubayeva Bibisara was some kind of a Sicilian Grand Prix and here Vaishali played true to her style. She attacked with great purpose and vigor. She didn't even care about this bishop hanging. Took on h7, took on d8 and then was materially doing very well. But uh, yeah, in the end, Asao Baeva managed to hold this to a draw. Admini Raut was playing against Antao Neta Stefanova and she got a good position. I think black was doing pretty fine, but Towards the end, like somewhere around here, Padmini took on b3 and uh, yeah, white rooks got really active and she managed to win this game with 3 extra pawns. Uh, last game for the day was Divya Deshmukh versus Alina Bivol. Divya was pawn down in the game but Alina Bivol played uh, very well and she managed to convert this pawn up position. 
that's how all the games ended for indian players but i hope you enjoyed the recap and now tomorrow is a rest day shashi kiran is playing amazingly well we also have nihal half a point behind at four points and we hope that team india continues their good play even in the second half of the tournament for the last five rounds <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,